Hi, and welcome to the next video in the Countess Shogun rigging series. In this video, we will be rigging the character's arm. I already went ahead and moved all of the bones we will need to a different layer. So as you can see here, we have the clavicle, then all of the upper arm bones, including all of the twist bones, then all of the lower arm bones, again with the twist and the temp bones, and then finally all of the hand bones. So you can go ahead and move all of the same bones to different layers so they are easier to select and see. As the next step, I will change the scale of all of the twist bones so that we can easily differentiate them from the rest. Next, we can adjust the length of the upper arm and lower arm temp bones. First, snap the cursor to the elbow and then grab the end of the upper arm temp bone and snap it to the cursor. Then, snap the cursor to the hand location and then snap the end of the lower arm temp bone to the cursor. Next, we can go ahead and rename some of the temp bones. Start by selecting the clavicle temp bone and rename it to clavicle control underscore L. Then select the upper arm temp bone and rename it to MCH upper arm driver underscore L. Then you can rename the lower arm temp bone to MCH lower arm driver underscore L. And lastly, rename the hand temp bone to MCH hand driver underscore L. We already have the clavicle control in place, so let's give it a custom shape. Then we can make a buffer bone for the clavicle deformed bone. So duplicate it and scale it down, change its thickness and rename it to buff clavicle underscore L. Then parent the buffer bone to the control. And lastly, constrain clavicle L to its buffer. As always, using a copy transformed constraint. With that, this clavicle rig is done. Moving on to the FK arm. First, select the upper arm, lower arm and hand driver bones. Duplicate them and make them a bit thicker so that they are easier to see. Then rename the first of these bones to FK upper arm control underscore L, second one to FK lower arm control L, and the last one to FK hand control L. Now just add some custom shapes to these bones and we have the FK control chain. You can also give them a different color. Let's move on to the IK setup. We can start the same way as we did for the FK chain. We select the three driver bones and duplicate them. Then for easier selection, make them a bit thicker. And next we can go ahead and rename all of them. Change the first one's name to MCH IK upper arm underscore L, second one to MCH IK lower arm underscore L, and the last one to IK hand control underscore L. We are missing a bone for the elbow target, so let's add that next. First snap the cursor to the elbow location and add a new bone. And while the new bone is still selected, drag it up to make it a bit longer. And then rename it to IK elbow pole underscore L. Now let's quickly move this bone to its correct location. For that, we will make a custom transform orientation using the normal space of the IK lower arm bone. If you need a slower demonstration for what I just did, check out the leg rigging video where I demonstrated the same process when I was placing the knee. This custom orientation is not needed anymore, so I will go ahead and delete it. Now with the elbow bone still selected, select the IK hand control and parent both of these to the world control. And let's give these controls custom shapes. Then we can add the inverse kinematics constraint. Change the constraint's chain length to 2 and then as the pull target assign the elbow control we created earlier. This should give us the functioning inverse kinematics arm. And now we can take the driver chain and make it follow the FK and IK setups. So let's constrain the upper arm first to the IK chain and then to the FK. Then we can repeat the process for the lower arm. So constrain the lower arm driver first to the IK and then to the FK bone. And then we repeat the process again for the hand. So first to IK and then to FK. Now to easily switch between IK and FK, we need a custom property. So let's add one to the pelvis control. Go to the edit options 
and change its name to arm ikfk and then change the property value and default value to zero. Then copy this property as a new driver. We can now use this to drive the ikfk switch. So select the upper arm driver again and for the second constraint paste this driver on the influence property. Then you can repeat the same process for the lower arm. And again for the hand driver. To make sure that the driver bones interpolate properly between IK and FK mode, make sure that they are connected to their parents. So parent the hand driver to the lower arm driver again and make sure to select connected. Then do the same for the lower arm and upper arm. Now let's test the setup and see if it's functioning as expected. Let's start by displacing the IK control and then switching to FK mode using our custom property. And we see that the driver bones are sliding between the two setups as expected. And with this setup working, we can go ahead and attach the deformed bones to the drivers. So let's make a buffer for the upper arm L bone. Give it a proper name and then parent it to the upper arm driver bone. And finally, constrain the upper arm L bone to its buffer. And now we can repeat the same process for the lower arm. So duplicate it to make a buffer, give it a proper name and parent it to the lower arm driver bone. And lastly, constrain it to its buffer. And we repeat the process one more time for the hand. So duplicate it to make a buffer, scale it down and make it a bit thicker give it a proper name and parent it to the hand driver bow. And you probably know what's next, we constrain the hand L bone to its buffer. And now when we transform the controls, the arm should follow like this. And you can probably see what's missing here, it is the twist distribution, so let's rig that next. We will start by renaming the first upper arm twist bone to MCH upper arm twist 01 driver L. Then parent it to the clavicle control. And now let's align its orientation with the upper arm driver bone. So select the twist bone first, then the upper arm driver, and then press Ctrl Alt and A. Then we go into pose mode to add a constraint. Select the lower arm driver as the target and then the upper arm twist bone and add a damped track constraint. This will make the twist bone always point at the elbow but orient with the shoulder. And now we can attach the actual upper arm twist bone to this setup. So start by making a buffer for the upper arm underscore twist zero one bone. Give it a proper name. Parent it to the twist driver that we just made. and then constrained the upper arm twist 01 bone to this buffer. This gives us a really nice twist distribution from elbow to shoulder. The second upper arm twist bone already works as expected, so we don't need this damp bone here. Before we start rigging the lower arm twist bones, let's hide the IK and FK bones so they are not in the way. To get a nice twist distribution along the lower arm, let's give it a couple of bendy bone segments. And let's change the ease in and ease out parameters so it's always going to stay straight. If you take a closer look at this bone, you can see that it already has some twist on it. This is because the hand is not perfectly aligned with this bone. To compensate for that, let's duplicate the hand driver and make a custom end handle for this bone. Rename the duplicate to MCH lower arm end handle and parent it to the hand driver. Then select the end handle again and then shift select the lower arm driver bone. And then using Ctrl Alt A, we align the end handle with the lower arm driver bone. Next, let's set the lower arm end handle to be this newly created bone. Set the end handle type to tangent and assign the handle bone. 
When we duplicated the hand bone to create the end handle, it inherited the constraints, which we can delete now. And as you can see now, there is no more twist on the lower arm driver bone. And when we rotate the hand, twists will nicely distribute along the lower arm driver bone. So now we can rename the lower arm twist stem bones. Change this one to MCH lower arm twist 2 driver. And this one to MCH lower arm twist 0 1 driver. Then let's constrain this twist bone to the lower arm driver bone using a copy transforms constraint. Enable follow B bone and set head tail to 1. And then copy this constraint to the second lower arm twist bone. And for the second one we will change head tail to 0.5. Then select both of these twist bones and apply selected as rest pose. And finally let's make some buffers for the actual twist bones. Give them the proper buff prefix. and parent them to their respective driver bones. And then as always, let's constrain the deformation bones to their buffers. And then we can test their behavior. And we can see that everything is working as expected. And that's it. That's the whole arm already rigged. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to write them down in the comment section. And lastly, if you learned anything from these videos and would like to see me make more, consider subscribing and maybe supporting me on one of the platforms listed here. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.